Hi, this is Danny again. This might be about video 12 on my Grid Tide series, and I finished the project a little bit over a year ago. And uh, I'm just this is just some loose ends. Um, as you know, it's a lot better to do stuff on the ground before you go up to the roof. Um, and it's certainly probably a lot smarter not to do your own wiring and hire a licensed electrician to do that. However, that's not the way I went. And if you are going to do your own wiring, this video is probably for you. And so what I did was I kind of went step by step into the measurements that you might want to do and some of the processes that you might want to do before you get stuff up on the roof. And I did kind of went over some voltmeter um, things. If you're new to voltmeters, you could kind of look at those. And um, I just wish you a lot of luck on your project. And um, hopefully this will be helpful in, your wi in the wiring portion of your grid tide uh, install. I'll see you on the next video. Here's a brief view of my setup. So I've got the in-phase combiner panel there. The, um, this is the PV panel side, so which goes up to the roof up there. And then on this side, I'm running the in-phase um, electronic system to monitor the panel production. Then right here, I have a, com I have a shutoff box, a master shutoff box with a lightning suppressor. And then that, that wiring goes over to here, which is my main electrical panel. This is a 150 amp breaker is the, uh, the thing that is the master shutoff for the entire panel. So if I kill this, I'm going to kill everything and it will be a lot safer to work with the circuits. So this is the safety portion of the video. I don't recommend that you do it yourself. However, I did do it myself. I've got a, um, an Eaton breaker in here. Line one is uh, this wire right here, and line which is the black, and line two is the red. Now what we're gonna do is measure against um, measure the black and the red together and you see we get 244.6 volts AC you can see the AC on the scale there now if I measure these two lugs here I'm gonna get the same should get the same measurement we'll go look I've got my probes there and uh, at 244.8. Very important to be on the AC scale at the voltage you're going to be reading. Another thing you want to make sure is that the your probes are on on the correct position. So your probes need to be common and uh, this red here don't use <laughs> don't put your red probe in these it will cause an explosion probably maybe your voltmeter will look like this so in that case if we were going to try to read AC voltage we would switch it right like this in the main electrical panel I have a back feed breaker that is located at the bottom of the panel per the plans that I submitted to the city now we're going to talk about line one and line two as you can see it's marked in the in the on this uh, combiner panel so line one is um, right up here on top on on this level and then down here at this level if we were to put in another breaker which I'll show you line two precedes line one here's the in-phase Q cable and you can see it just has two connectors on it line one and line two Here's the ends there. And line two is where the probe is right now. Um, and uh, line one is on the right hand side. So I'm matching the exact type of breaker that I have. And we gotta make sure that we're using, of course, an AC breaker. 
and I'm using these e Eaton breakers that are the breakers and then my ampacity my my amps of the breaker have to match the plans ideally um, for with the city uh, otherwise you have to look at the um, wire rating that you're using so the anatomy of the breaker has to be sort of like this line one and line two are tied together with this bar so you get a common trip um, and that's see where it says common trip there uh, the next thing to look at would be here are the screw terminals where you terminate line one or line two depending on what the um, panel position of this breaker is and then you can see here these are sort of um, the butt side of the panel and I'll show you snapping in, how to snap in the breaker and this is the the power the power side of the breaker we're gonna uh, use uh, this um, compound to 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 put onto the contacts before we um, deploy them and it's just gonna uh, cause the um, uh, limits corrosion and here's another uh, product that's uh, pretty much the same uh, you know type of compound that we'll use so we'll use this on wire nuts we will use this on um, the breakers and um, use it for most all contacts because we're going to be most of the time we're in an outside environment. So here. now I'm going to put this uh, breaker in. So the idea is to get um, this portion right here uh, lined up with these uh, these little uh, this little section right here, and you want to make sure that the breaker is off. And uh, so what we're going to do is just put this butt part in, line it up with line one and line two, and don't touch the anything except for the plastic, and then you just press it in. If you needed to take it out, you just pull it out like that. Uh, we're going to energize the circuit. So I don't know, my practice is... Um, I always treat things like it's going to blow up when I turn it on for the first time because, you, you know, I'm going to go in a little bit about testing, what I sort of recommend for testing. But, um, you know, the first time you switch something on like this, you know, make sure you got a clear path in back of you and, you know, stay away from the circuit. You got safety gear on and you switch it on. So my probes are on now. Um, and. So I'd expect that we're going to go down to the voltmeter and see that we got um, some uh, some voltage, but we don't. Hey, what's happened? Well, if you look closely, you see that that's DC, not AC. So you could actually make the wrong decision there if you weren't looking at the voltmeter correctly. So we'll look at some other things now. Here's the green bus bar that's coming from the main panel, and there's the white bus bar that's coming from the main panel. And as you can see, what I did here was I hooked the black probe up to the white wire here. So my multimeter is set up on the AC scale, and now I'm going to read this line two and it's reading 121 volts. Now I'm going to switch the probe again to this line two, line one. Of course, this corresponds to where I am on the bus bar here. And I'm going to read 122 volts, 122.1. Here I'm going on to the white bar and I'm not getting anything. So um, I've got my probe on, the black probe on the, the green, and I'm not getting anything on the, uh, when I read the white, okay? Um, the other thing is we could read these bus bars here, and of course, um, off the green and get um, voltage, much like we would the white. In phase unit, um, monitoring unit comes pre-wired. It looks like we have an optional AC output circuit. I should be reading L1 voltage. I'm on the uh, the black there. 
with uh, the voltage. So if I was to read the white, I'm reading voltage off the white now, right? And if I was to read the green, I would read voltage. I still read voltage. Um, uh, using the, the I'm, I'm connected to the black and then I I'm, I'm was re able to read voltage from these things so let's what do you think would happen if I actually put this probe on the metal part of the pipe the metal pipe is um, is my ground in this situation so I'm actually um, con I'm actually reading voltage um, this is my uh, voltage reference is is the pipe and then I'm reading the voltage from um, one of those lines so it's not that the pipe is energized it's that that is a path to ground that a very small path that the vo that, that the multimeter is taking to ground right now in theory we should be able to the green should be connected to this to this metal pipe every single junction in this um, it, you know that goes up to the roof this metal pipe should have a um, be grounded on the outside of the metal pipe in addition to having a green wire on the inside of the pipe so right what we're going to do is we're going to go on to the ohm scale here and your meter should read about like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch this probe I'm going to dig it in pretty good and I'm going to get I should be getting some some uh, resistance uh, a very uh, uh, a little bit uh, 0.4 5.7 ohms or something it's flying all around because I got it's kind of a painted connection my probe connection is not that good but um, you can kind of see that I'm measuring from the green over there which is on the bus bar over to here and I'm getting um, some level of, of connection. So the conduit ground is a kind of a safety feature where if we were to accidentally put um, electricity um, from, from one of these L1 or L2s over to the ground and energize this, the breakers would, would trip off. And so it's almost impossible for you to touch this metal pipe right here and have it energized because the breaker would have already tripped. So once we're finished reading ohms, it's really important to switch it off the ohm scale. Otherwise, you're going to blow this up next time you try to measure voltage so back, with it. Back feed breaker again, L1 and L2, and um, it's feeding down to, um, to this area right here. And um, you can see the green, the white, and then the L1 and L2 going down to um, this uh, J box here. And then that J box is going to to this other section here. Showed you this a lot of this detail in the other video, but something that the inspector required was me to have these um, these nuts um, on the on the conduit, attach them directly to the conduit from the green bus bar. So you can kind of see these um, bushings. They're called bushings, and so I've got them to the the uh, bus bar. And the bushing there and then I've got another bu bushing there so that ensures that the conduit um, this conduit has um, ground here I've got the in phase cable and uh, that's what it looks like so when it's stretched across the roof it should just be a hundred percent open so you could actually energize the breaker as long as you didn't have the panels hooked up this thing would just um, should just be able to be hooked up to your circuit um, switch the breaker on so um, but without it hooked up to uh, the breaker you should be able to just switch this over to the ohm scale and um, it should read um, open it should not read a short condition so that's one way in your garage you can test this I've got out. the red um, wire here on the multimeter connected over to the black wire and I'm, I'm on ohm scale and so um, we we could um, use the ohms to test continuity for this cable if we wanted to in advance so I'm gonna just take this
I don't have continuity there. I don't have continuity there. So what's happening is L1 and L2 come from the power company. Then uh, we go through the shutoff. The white um, only passes through over to the combiner. And then we take L1 and L2 and we take that over a conduit and then we go into on, onto the Q cable. So we could, once we do all the wiring, before we hook up the panels, we could turn on the electricity and we could actually test um, a couple of these points here on the Q cable. That would be possible. If we were to go up on the roof, we could plug our voltmeter probes into this in phase connection like so and we could read uh, 220 volts if our breaker was on we could test each of those connections and make sure we were actually getting voltage uh, through from the main panel and that way once we hook up our panels uh, we you know we know that it'll probably work otherwise we might have trouble and I think it'd be worth the test up on the roof to test your voltage. The other thing before we even put it up on the roof we could independently test the Q cable. Um, so the other thing we could do is we could make sure that um, that that this when we pull this wire through the conduit we have, we could also make sure that this wire isn't shorted so L1 and L2 is not shorted to the conduit so when we do energize it we don't pop off the breaker so there's that testing we can do and then we can also test intermediate along along uh, for, forward make sure that the conduit is carrying the ground and that the ground uh, cable is not shorting to any of these other wires with a continuity test so all those things can be done and particularly if we're not um, skilled electricians which we're not it's probably a good idea if we test things along the way so when we know that things aren't right and we can correct them 